Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. It's time to take a look at what's trending this week on Takedown as we continue our cruise through summer. Well, the show starts this week in Mekong, France, home of the 2016 UWW Junior World Championships. America's Spencer Lee entered the gold medal round as the defending champ and heavy favorite at 50 kilos, but got all he could handle from Kurshid Parpiev, who was competing in the first international tournament of his young career. Perpiev hit an early hip toss to go up four. Lee fired back with the takedown and the step out, but gave up another four points on a counter shot. Trailing 9-5, Lee reeled off eight unanswered points and won his third world title, 11-9. All right, Spencer Lee, man, crazy finals match. Came out, got the job done. Got your second straight junior world title, third straight world title. How's it feel? Tiring. <laughs> it feels good. I only slept two hours last night for some reason. Missed two flights on the way here. It's been crazy. If I had lost, I don't know what I would do. You're emotional, Spencer. What's going through your head? I, I, I just overcame a lot. Like I said, two hours of sleep. I don't know what the heck. I couldn't nap. I was so tired. I was tired before I even started that match. I don't know how I won. <laughs> America's second gold medal came in much less dramatic fashion. It was Mark Hall hitting an early low single and four leg laces to down Iran's Aman Barigthala, 10-0. After last year, that's, that feeling has been in my heart for a while. And this, this just takes it and crushes that feeling I had last year. I mean, this is the first time I was, like, I was just about to cry. Like, that's the first time I've ever had tears of joy. So. I was really, like, if I didn't have to come over here, I was really close to uh, crying and Coach Slade's <laughs> arms. But, yeah, it feels good, and it just helps me know that I have I have a, a step that I'm, that I'm on now. And I just got to keep climbing. You know, there's, this is big. There's bigger and better things I can get to. First year junior Dayton Fix sent the U.S. home with a third freestyle medal on Sunday. He beat Ukraine's Andriy Yatsenko for the bronze. Fix hit two early takedowns to go up by four. The Ukrainian cut the lead in half on a low single, but Fix tacked on three second period takedowns for an easy 10-3 win. Well, I mean, there's a lot of these guys are full grown men out there wrestling. wrestling and, I mean, I'm only 18 years old. Some of those guys I wrestled today were probably 20, maybe 20 plus, you never know. <laughs> and I mean, it's just a great experience because I'm out here wrestling these kind of tournaments and I haven't been committed to a college yet. Yeah. So. It's awesome, awesome experience for me. What does this do for, for your development in the future, your confidence level? You know you can go with the, the best in the world. You've done it before, you do it again. So you know you're at a certain level, but progressing, what does it do? Yeah, I mean, it gives me a lot of confidence. Just those last three matches, especially that last match, because that guy, he's a good wrestler. Two-time cadet world champion. He won my weight, he actually won my weight in 2014 when I was there. So that means I'm, I'm improving every year. And that's just what I have to keep doing. Let's take a look at the team race. Russia racked up some 66 points with two gold medals. Azerbaijan finished 19 points back in second, followed by Turkey, Iran, and the United States in fifth. Here's freestyle coach Brandon Slay on the U.S. performance in France. You come away with two gold medals, one bronze medal, mm -hmm. a handful of other placements. Um, how do you feel overall leaving this tournament with this team? Finishing fourth wasn't the goal. And, and I believe if, as we analyze each and every one of these weights, I really feel like we could have been one of the top three teams in the world here. But some little mistakes cost us. I mean, not, not, not defending shots, not head blocking shots, just good baseline defense, cost us. And not being able to defend gut wrenches, cost us. Um, wrestling a little timid at sometimes and, and not staying on the attack, you know, kind of cost us. So th those are mistakes that can be corrected, you know, for the future. And again, this age group needs to realize, I know it's tough for them that some of these guys didn't accomplish their dreams, but they have to keep the perspective of, hey, this is a journey towards, you know, being a senior world champion. This is a journey towards being an Olympic champion. And hopefully these guys take these lessons, you know, home with them, with their coaches, and they continue to progress. Last thing, just give me your thoughts on the, the program as a whole. You know, we've, we've been really successful this tournament mm -hmm. uh, in this year, years past. Mm -hmm. Cadets, same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the program seems to be gaining momentum, building up, building up, and pushing guys into the senior level. So how do you feel leaving the, the program, you know, leaving this tournament, going into cadets? Just where everything's at? 
Well, I think for me, the last few years being the national development coach, I, th I think we had not, we'd won 19 medals kind of coming into this tournament, so we won three here. So, you know, we have 22 medals, and, and we've yet to go to cadets, which will be in Tbilisi. We'll leave next week for that. So, you know, hopefully, you know, our cadet team um, kind of can bring home the prize and, and continue to win more medals. But the thing is, it's, yeah, the medals are, it's great to win those medals, but ultimately we're trying to develop these cadets and juniors to be our future seniors who are going to continue to succeed for Team USA. And, and I think that kind of the secret to doing that is continuing to get our, even our schoolboys and our cadets and our juniors wrestling with our senior level athletes. Like the more that we can get a 14 year old wrestling with a 25 year old, you know, the better that 14 year old is going to do down the road. I mean, I think about Mark Hall when he's 15 out at the Olympic Training Center as a 15 year old wrestling with Jordan Burroughs on a frequent basis, right? I, I think about the Kyle Snyders wrestling with 25 year olds. I mean, that has really helped our developmental program succeed. And I, and I hope, you know, USA Wrestling sees that and they continue to, to make that happen down the road. All right, stay tuned. When we return, we're going to talk to two of America's most popular wrestlers. That's after the break. You're watching Takedown, powered by Casey's General Store, famous for pizza. original or flatbread supreme pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and all-purpose seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood. Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit cookiesbbq.com. Cookies is the one. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. NCAA wrestling champ, Olympic medalist, musician, and hero. These are all words I used to describe Jaden Cox. But apparently that's not enough for the Missouri native who now plans to play football for the Tigers in 2017. And as for the hero thing, well, Cox was on his way to a softball game just last week when he stopped to save a man who had just crashed his motorcycle. You can't make this stuff up. Superman joined us on Takedown Radio Saturday and talked about wrestling, football, and roadside assistance. I got goals set. You know, I've been very open about my ambitions towards the, uh, you know, winning the highs, and uh, you know, and also I, I want to win a third national title. Plus, it's my last year to wrestle folk style, so you know, because uh, after that, you know, I'm I'm pretty much going to be uh, well, one uh, football, and then, and then two after that, you know, to see where, where freestyle takes me. I, I you know, I, I plan to come back. I do plan to come back and, and wrestle at some point. Um, but you know, like I said, I, I live my life day by day. So wherever my heart's at, and whatever I can fully get behind, that's what I'll do. And do you feel, being an Olympic bronze medalist, that you have a higher sense of pressure and expectation from the wrestling community to go undefeated this season? Uh, no, not really, because the, the, I don't wrestle for the, the wrestling community. You know, that's not why I do what I do. I don't wrestle for the approval or the opinion of others. 
Um, you know, um, because if I did, I wouldn't be a bronze medalist today. I wouldn't even be on the Olympic team, actually. Actually, half of that, I wouldn't even qualify the spot. I wouldn't have done anything that I did this summer if I would have wrestled for the community and wrestled off what they said and wrestled off the opinion of, of others. Um, you know, and then, and they, and for some I would and for some I wouldn't. So I wrestle for the sake that I love what I do and I love the sport and I'm blessed to be able to do it. So, um, there's no pressure. It's just the love of the sport and have fun and do it and, and do it with a sense of joy. Well, he hasn't saved any lives yet, as far as we know, but like Jaden Cox, Jesse Thilke started as an Olympic team long shot and became one of the most beloved wrestlers in the country. Though he was unable to medal in his first Olympic appearance, the 24-year-old is exactly what American Greco-Roman has been missing, an attitude. The affectionately named Honey Badger was our second featured guest on the show Saturday and talked about his performance and a system put in place to keep Americans off the medal stand. Uh, well, essentially, force parterre is if you get called for two two passivities, uh, I believe within the same period, which means the ref is saying that you're being non-aggressive. Uh, but what it turns out is that that becomes very arbitrary when you come to the world level and you're wrestling, you know, multiple-time world champs or medalists. Even if you are the aggressor, we have seen it all comes down to who you're wrestling, who the refs are, where they're from, and if they have external agendas, obviously. So if you get, you know, two passivities against you, even if you're the more aggressive wrestler, you're going down. And then, obviously, all the foreigners are very, very good at parterre. And especially as the game plan against me, since I'm so good on my feet, is to stall and stall and hope that I get put down. It's pretty clear, if, you know, in all three styles, if anyone was watching, that we are not getting going to get calls. We're not going to get any calls in any style. You know, I mean, look at the stuff that Frank Monero had to go through. That's obnoxious. That's obscene. You know, that shouldn't be happening. But it does, and that's the way it is. So, I mean, essentially what they're looking for in a completely fair situation is a guy getting into an underhook and controlling it, a two-on-one, or controlling the center and using his legs and driving the other guy. But, again, it doesn't matter, apparently, if you have these stars and stripes on your singlet. So what's your plan going forward? You're not wrestling? Uh, you're not back. After I take some time here, you know, see the family, relax, get back to basics, and uh, then go back to Colorado Springs, uh, get an MRI on my shoulder. They got to inject ink and then look at my labrum. More than likely than not, have to get surgery on that. And then I'll probably have to get my neck reevaluated because I had a herniated disc and a bone spur before. Check that out. Rehab for as long as that takes and come back for repairs. As always, you can listen to the entire radio program, including our interviews with Jesse and Jaden, absolutely free on iTunes and at TakedownWrestle.com. Well, seven million reasons why Bucknell Wrestling may be on the rise. We'll take you inside the Bison's new facility. That's after the break. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to McBride Matt. Stay tuned. Homemade crust, fresh meats and vegetables, 100% real mozzarella. There ain't nothing like the smell of a homemade pizza when it comes out of the oven. Of course, those pine tree air fresheners smell pretty darn good, too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Introducing your favorite dip on a pizza. Pick up the all-new spinach artichoke chicken pizza today. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green but cost-effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com.
Well, with the wrestling dynasty just down the road and major programs throughout the entire state, recruiting at Bucknell in Pennsylvania is no easy task. But thanks to a $7 million donation from former wrestler Bill Graham, the university can now offer something that most schools can't, a state-of-the-art practice facility with a lounge, weight room, and wellness center. From the Bucknell Athletic Department, let's take a look inside at the new home of Bison Wrestling. The Graham Building opened its doors to Bucknell faculty and staff on Monday for a brief open house. The brand new multi-million dollar facility, thanks to a donation from Bucknell alum and trustee emeritus Bill Graham, will serve as both a wrestling center and campus health and wellness center. It's phenomenal. You know, I've had a, a lot of uh, people say to me, use different adjectives throughout the day, and it's, uh, it's a special place. It's unique and uh, uh, it's fantastic. I don't think it gets much nicer than this when you're talking about a wrestling-specific training center. And I'm just really, really uh, looking forward to our student athletes getting here in two weeks and being able to see the finished product. It's perfect. Um, night and day compared to our old wrestling facility, thanks to the generosity of, of Bill Graham and uh, obviously the university itself. Uh, now we have what I believe is one of the nicest wrestling training facilities in the country. The Graham Wrestling Center, which is located on the second floor, includes new locker rooms, practice areas, and additional student-centered spaces. I think we have everything we need in this facility um, for these student athletes. You know, they can come in here uh, between strength and conditioning. Um, you know, we have a great teaching tool with our, our, our recording camera system on mat, you know, where we can operate 15, 20, 25 second delay. These guys can uh, critique themselves doing technique, drills, and skills uh, in, in, individually or as a team. So uh, we have their own team room here that these guys can utilize to study at. Uh, to eat at, to hydrate, um, their own team lounge where they can re relax, our own locker room, which is a special thing, full service training room with cold tub, hot tub. So I think what's going to do, it's going to allow these guys a place to be at just about full time. It's going to bring these guys, I think, even closer together when you're talking about team camaraderie, even though wrestling's an individual sport, there's nothing like these guys going through the process together. And when they're spending more time together with each other, you know, they're going to be able to lift each other up more. They're going to be able to help each other. And uh, I think our whole program individually and and as a team, these guys are all going to grow just because of this facility. I graduated from Bucknell in 2011, um, so my recruiting class was the second recruiting class to come in after the program was reinstated. Um, obviously, I would have loved to have a facility like this. I feel that um, some of the tools in here are really cool and, and would have helped me. But at the same time, it helps me to feel like I was a part of the process as far as providing some of the foundation to help uh, build a team to a point where, where we could move into a facility like this. The new Campus Health and Wellness Center will be located on the first floor, housing services such as Bucknell Student Health, psychological services, and a campus-wide wellness initiative making the Graham Building a facility the entire campus can benefit from. Yeah, it's, it's really difficult to put into words what Bill Graham means to me as a friend, what he means to the wrestling program here, um, what he means to Bucknell University. It's just about impossible to put it into words other than he's a special guy. He cares deeply. He's got a, a very caring spirit. He cares deeply about people in general, uh, but he really cares about uh, young people. I've just been telling people and I tell my wife, I'm like up in the morning and I, I can't wait to get to work, you know, when you're coming into a new place, a new building, you know, it, it's kind of, it, it can be rejuvenating is what it can be and I, I'm really, really looking forward to these guys getting here in two weeks and just getting the process started and get, get it going because um, I think it's going to be a, um, a special moment for these guys when they walk in here and when they realize that this is theirs full time. And um, it's great for the coaching staff, too, and just really look forward to coming in here every day and uh, seeing that we can just continue to improve and, and move forward. Wrestling fans will be back after the short timeout. Tom Ryan's up next. You don't want to go anywhere. You're watching Takedown, powered by Nike Wrestling. Yellow Blue wants to show you three great ways to make your home more comfortable. Install a hybrid solar home system, utilizing solar power in the day, battery power at night. 
Install a solar attic fan to reduce heat and moisture from your attic. And install a multi-layer reflective insulation blanket in your attic to reduce the cost of heating and cooling. Conserve energy, save money, protect the environment with Yellow Blue Ecotech. Learn more ways at yellowbluetech.com. Speed the Sauce Man here. While sauces and seasons are our business, food is our passion. And we've been helping make your favorite foods taste better for years. Try our wings and things hot sauce and everything from chicken wings to your morning eggs. Use it in recipes like spicy chicken noodle dinner, party dip, and buffalo chicken pizza. It's not only delicious, but it's award winning too. Wings and things recently earned first place honors in the hot sauce category at the National Barbecue Association's Award of Excellence competition. Remember, smart cookies use cookies. Proudly made in the USA, Danmar offers incredible protection and customized gear. I'm Tony Ramos, NCAA champion and world team member. Take my word that Danmar Warrior headgear is the best. It's what I use. Look for my limited edition signature headgear at a retailer near you or online at danmarwarrior.com. I'm a world-class warrior and you can be one too with Danmar. Follow me on Twitter at T underscore Ram133 or on my website teamramos.co. Our guest in the Nike hot seat is just off a flight from France. Ohio State head coach Tommy Ryan joins the show. Coach, it's been a crazy past couple of weeks for you. Let's start with the addition of Travel Delognev. Well, you know, obviously I know Travel really well. He's been in our training center uh, for nearly seven years now. Um, you know, obviously a two-time Olympian, multiple world medalist. But the thing that, you know, I... You see those things on the on the on the outside, and you think, "Wow, this guy is is uh, has had some an incredible career." But when you walk alongside him and you you talk to him and you listen to what he thinks and and uh, you watch him you watch him teach, you know, I have firsthand uh, firsthand view, you know, of of how good of a coach and teacher he is. So you know, we're really excited that he's going to be taking over, you know, the RTC, and of course, Coach Jaggers has been alongside. Lou and me the entire way. I mean, he's a great coach. He's he's had a huge impact in this program. So he his position gets elevated as well. And we'll probably have a co probably have a co head coach to the RTC um, you know, going forward. Let's talk a bit about you mentioned Coach Roselli, uh, and it was re recently announced that he would become the new head coach of Oklahoma. Um, Obviously, he's been a friend of yours, a confidant, et cetera. How involved were you in the decision uh, for him to not only interview for the job, but to take the job? Well, I mean, you know, I, the first thing I say that comes to mind when I think of Coach Roselli and the fact that he's committed, Lou's committed to go to Oklahoma was just pure joy. You know, I was just so happy for a guy that's given so much to so many people. And Oklahoma is a great job. Uh, so, you know, joy was the first thing. And then just a lot of reflection. You know, Lou and I came to Ohio State the same year, same time. Um, we established a great friendship. You know, he moved. He actually moved into my house uh, and stayed with, uh, stayed with my family uh, when we first got the program, uh, you know, moving in the right direction. And we were both just so optimistic. You know, we were so excited about building something special. So there was a lot of reflection, you know, a lot of looking back and, and um you know, just the time we spent together. So uh, he's ready to he's ready to be the king of uh, Oklahoma and run that program, and we're looking forward to it. You know, I'm so happy for him and his family. You know, and I'll, I'll ask you to comment, if you're comfortable, on Mark Cody and his departure. Were you surprised at, at a five-year tenure for Cody at, at Oklahoma? I was, uh, of course, I was, yeah, I was surprised for sure. I mean, Mark did a great job at American, and, um you know, I think he, I don't know, you know, this, this couple of tough seasons, I, I don't know. I mean, they've had, they've had a couple of national champions, they've had All-Americans, but, you know, uh, there's so much going on within the Ohio State program that I just focus in on, and, um, but it was a surprise. What was going through your head, your heart, uh, when Kyle became the Olympic gold medalist? Well, I was squeezing his mom around her neck, and I was squeezing Kevin I was wedged in between the two of them with like 10 seconds to go. And, um, uh, you know, the Russian was coming after him pretty hard uh, late in the match. And we would just let that clock run down. You know, uh, his, his, uh, 
his prediction, his premonition was going to come true. It only took him 15 years to, uh, to fulfill what he said he was going to do. As a five-year-old, he said he was going to win Olympic gold. And by 20, he's got it. So I believe him when he says something. Tom Ryan has been our guest in the Nike hot seat today. Tom, thank you very much. Uh, best of luck. We appreciate the time. Thanks, Scott. Well, special thanks to Tom Ryan, Jaden Cox, Jesse Thilke, and all the guests on today's program. And a huge shout out to Team USA on an eight medal performance at the Junior World. Bam! Tony Hager and I will be talking more about that later on this week on Global Wrestling News. For breaking wrestling news, interviews, and articles, head over to TakedownWrestle.com. Tune in on Saturdays for the longest running wrestling radio show on the planet. I'm Scott Casper, signing off. We'll talk to you next week.